This is uh, for number 10. For the belled caisson with the soil boring report shown, calculate the axial loading bearing capacity for this foundation element. Assume the topsoil is organic material and provides no bearing capacity. So we have here a belled caisson shown in section, and then the bearing capacity of the soils, all the different levels of the soils from the soils boring report that starts off in the top level has topsoil and there's some silty sand that has a 1200 PSF uh, capacity. Then we have sandy gravel, which has 2200. PSF down below that. Then there's a mix, couple mixed ones, uh, gravels and sands and silts and such at 2,900 and 3,200. And then down there's bedrock down at the at the bottom there at 10,000 PSF. So uh, which of those numbers are we going to really care about? Well, I don't know about anybody else, but if I'm going to put a case on in, I want a nice big number. So I like the bottom one. Yeah, essentially, this is total red herring. All of this extra information, the only one you care about is that 10,000 PSF down at the bottom. Uh, all of those other silty sands and all that stuff uh, might be useful for a different foundation system if you were doing a raft or uh, spread footing mm -hmm. somewhere higher up. But the entire point of a belled caisson is you're reaching way down to get to some very good soil, yep. hopefully bedrock, although not always. Um, right. Uh, and then you're going to bell it out. You make that shape at the bottom where it's so it's a, a column of one size for most of it. But then when it gets down to the very bottom, it gets wider. And the whole point of that is just to get more bearing area down at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're not having to do a full eight foot column all the way up. That'd be a huge amount of concrete. And so you do the four foot column in this case, it's four foot, it's lots of different sizes, uh, and then bells out to the eight foot down at the bottom. So mm -hmm. the question then is, all right, I've got the 10,000 PSF and I've got uh, an eight foot uh, bell down at the bottom. What's my capacity? Yep. So your question might be a little confusing because it does <laughs> have the word bearing capacity in there. So some people may think that it's this 10,000, but it's actually wanting to know how much axial you can put down the thing. So if you remember from a previous problem, we know that pressure equals P over A, and we're actually going to solve for P. So we want to take that 10,000, and it's, let's see, it was PSF, I think, is what you're giving everything yep. in. So we know it's 10,000 PSF times the area, and so it's the area of that circle down here at the bottom, down here, we want the area of that. So uh, I'm going to write it out in terms of diameter, but it is pi r squared. I tend to think in terms of uh, diameter too much today. So uh, that's how to convert it to, so it's... <laughs> I totally would have done a pi r squared, but okay, yeah, <laughs> but we, right, we got you. So the so, 8 over uh, yeah. 4, four so is... So when you do the math, let's see, where's my cheat sheet here? Uh, when you do the math, you get 500, and, you can write it as 502,000, you can write it as 502 kips, um, so, so that's the answer. The answer there um, is that's what the total capacity for that size of a belled caisson on that uh, capacity of bedrock with the 10,000 PSF, that's what that's going to tell you. So uh, you're, you're doing the, the area and then the, the, um, the uh, capacity of the soil, and that's telling us what the potential uh, P is, the potential total load that would be, we'd be able to design for, uh, for whatever this building is. Yep. Um, and this is the kind of thing you have to be very careful of that just because they give you a lot of information doesn't mean it's pertinent. Uh, so this would be one of those examples where uh, a lot of uh, red herring information. Mm -hmm.